So recently I was tasked with building another Hackintosh. The goal of this was to try to compete with the highest end Mac mini at a fraction of the cost. So here's how it went. So of course we're starting this build from scratch. Now like I said this Mac is supposed to compete with the highest level Mac mini. So we went ahead and used the Intel Core i7-9700K. Now this chip is a 9th gen processor while Apple only offers an 8th gen processor with their highest end Mac mini. We also went ahead and got some 32GB, 3200MHz DDR4 RAM. For storage, the Mac mini comes with a 512GB SSD. We went with a regular 1TB SATA SSD. And also, the Mac mini doesn't have a video card, so we put an RX 580 in there as well. Now of course, for Hackintoshes, you do need a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, so we bought a PCIe Wi-Fi chip to go with it. We also housed this in the NZXT H510, which is a very compact, small, and overall a very well-designed case. We went with a regular 600 watt semi-modular power supply, and the Z390M game micro ATX board from Gigabyte. We also went with the Dark Rock 4 fan. So once all the parts came, I immediately started building it. For this step, you can put it together just like a regular PC. So you just lay down your motherboard, just install your CPU, install your RAM, install your fan cooler, then mount the motherboard. There's no specific way in building a computer. It all really depends on your preference. This is just the way that I do it because it's most easiest for me. Install your power supply, install your graphics card and any other PCIe devices that you have with it. Now, once you have all your components in, you wanna make sure you don't seal up your case yet. You wanna make sure that the computer posts, at least get into the BIOS and make sure all your devices are recognized. Luckily for me, this build took about one to two hours and posted first try. All my devices were recognized and I was able to go on to the next step. Now, if you're using this as a regular Windows PC, you could stop right here, insert your Windows install disk and be good to go. However, with Mac OS, it's not that simple at all. You have to design something called an EFI folder. Now, if you're lucky, you could find a perfectly working EFI folder for your system if someone has the exact same specs, but it's still better to build your own because you don't know exactly what specs you're working with and you know your system the best so you could build it to your liking. So to build my E5 folder for any computer that I Hackintosh, I follow this link in the description below by the developers of OpenCore. Now if you're completely new to Hackintosh, you might not know what OpenCore is. So basically to boot macOS on non-Apple hardware, you need something called a bootloader. It basically injects all the drivers that are necessary to boot on your machine with your specific hardware and it lets macOS know what it's working with. While there are more, there's two main bootloaders, one being Clover and one being OpenCore. I used OpenCore because I've been using this since I started Hackintoshing. Clover I feel like isn't very Mac-like, like it doesn't give you a very Mac experience while trying to boot it up. But that's just my preference. You might find Clover easier, you might find OpenCore easier. So once you have your EFI built and your config.plist built, you want to make sure you select your SymBIOS, which essentially is just which Mac you want it to think it is and perform like. So I chose a Mac mini because it's closest to a Mac mini. From there, you're ready to boot. And if you're lucky, you might get it to boot first try, but that's very rare. Hackintoshing requires a lot of patience and a lot of waiting. The build took me a total of six hours, one to two being the actual build itself and the rest being the Hackintosh. I also added a few things to kind of give it more of a vanilla Mac experience. For example, regularly, you would have to select which partition you want to boot into. But um, for some reason, the computer was giving me problems when I wanted to hide certain partitions. However, after like 45 minutes of just playing with the config, I finally figured out how to get it to just boot straight away. So there's no interaction with the GUI necessary. You just hit the button and it turns on and boots into Mac OS. Also, I wanted as much performance as possible. So I went ahead and turned on XMP to give you that full 3200 megahertz of RAM. I also made a bootable USB with an older version of OpenCore that can be updated later on. So if OpenCore were to ever fail, which is very unlikely, they can use that lockout key just to get back into the operating system. After loads of research, I finally figured out how to get it to hide the EFI folder, which was a nightmare in itself. I just wanted to make sure that it acted like a real Mac. I also turned off verbose mode so the user doesn't see all the lines of code running through the computer to make it boot. And it's just a symbol clean Apple logo with the status bar. I figured if I could clean up the bootloader, it'll give it a much better user experience. I just spent a lot more time trying to make sure this is as close to a real Mac as possible. So you get that very Apple-esque feeling and experience. I also tried to do more messing around and update the Kex, update the config, and update OpenCore itself, just so that when Big Sur comes out, it's easier to upgrade the operating system. But all in all, this build was pretty surprisingly easy to put together in the first place, I guess because it's a micro ATX board. But nevertheless, it was still pretty fun to do and mess around with. If you guys want to see more of these videos, let me know in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.